For Adam Weintraub is the communication director for Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. And he's joining us now live to talk about the eruption that just happened at Kilauea. It's been less than an hour. And Adam, I guess the first question would be, should we be concerned about the safety of anybody on Hawaii Island? At this point, the data that we're receiving from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatories does not indicate that there's any activity outside the summit crater, which is entirely within Hawaiian uh, Volcanoes National Park. Uh, so this does not uh, seem to be developing the way the 2018 eruption did. Obviously, they're keeping a close eye to see if there's any movement from outside the caldera uh, toward the rift zones. But at this point, uh, it looks like uh, the, the lava is contained within the summit and uh, within the crater itself. Which is great news. Uh, what about the earthquakes themselves? Any concern that those might escalate or any damage or impact to the community that those might pose? Um, the indications from, uh, first you have to understand, Kilauea is one of the most heavily instrumented uh, volcanoes anywhere in the world. So they've got great monitoring and uh, there's been recent upgrades to the monitoring. Nothing they've seen so far that we understand is, has indicated that this is anything uh, in the earthquakes but the movement of magma itself. It's not a major seismic event. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's a very active place, the Big Island. Uh, uh, but the, the indications we're seeing thus far uh, are that these are relatively small earthquakes, seismic activity associated with the movement of lava up from the chamber into the crater, uh, rather than anything that's uh, a, a larger, you know, a, f a five or a six. We're, we're talking about twos and threes here from the looks of it. Mm. Adam, you mentioned all the sensors around Kilauea. Do we have any idea how long this particular activity could last? Uh, up to the mountain, uh, as <laughs> always. Um, the, uh, uh, the the nice thing is that uh, as they've increased instrumentation, uh, we now have uh, a much better feel for all of the various uh, factors that go into the eruption, and uh, we can. Uh, I've been very impressed by by how well they've been able to project. The, the starts of eruptions over on the Big Island in this most recent uh, uh, couple of years. Uh, so the folks at Hawaiian Volcano Observatories are doing a great job on this. Again, we're, we're speaking to Adam Weintraub, the Communication Director for the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. A Adam, what strikes us is how quickly this happened. You know, just a little while ago, we were talking about how the level was, well, the alert level was raised from yellow to orange, and then less than an hour later, we see this erupting. You know, what does that say about the unpredictability of this situation? Well, HVO has been monitoring uh, these mini swarms of earthquakes up underneath the summit area for uh, weeks now. Uh, what the, the new instrumentation and what the, uh, the network of instrumentation has done is that when it did finally make the break towards the surface, they were able to pick up that motion uh, almost immediately and uh, translate that into information that we could provide to the public so that if there was any concern, a need for concern, we could have shared it immediately. Fortunately, in this case so far, it doesn't look like it. The alert level for the aviation code was raised from orange to red by the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. What does that mean for yes. any flights around in and around the state? Well, the aviation level is a reflection of the emissions that are coming out of the crater. Um, the red designation indicates that you've got a lot of outgassing, you've got the possibility of uh, Pele's hair, glass particles, ash, that sort of thing. Uh, it, for the moment, that's in the area immediately around the volcano. So because the air routes on the Big Island don't typically go over the active volcanic zone, the flights to Hilo generally track along the northern edge of the island and then cut south. Uh, this will be a precautionary measure that will bear watching, uh, but until we start to see some of the data coming in as far as how much SO2 is being emitted, uh, how much glass is being emitted, we won't have a great sense of uh, what the threat is to uh, breathing in the area or to the aviation. Uh, Kilauea tends not to be a particularly uh, particulate heavy uh, volcano compared to what is on the continental rim. So when you see warnings about the vast ash clouds that shut down aviation, uh, those 
frequently are more commonly associated with continental type volcanoes that have got a more granitic composition than the, the what we have here under the hot spot. Uh, obviously, the data will tell the tale, and I'm sure that the folks at HBO are already planning to get uh, their sampling teams out into the field so that they can get us a better picture of what's going on with the air quality. Yeah, Adam, uh, you speak about picture. I mean, right behind you, as you're speaking, we're showing a picture of Kilauea. Uh, and no matter how many times we see it, and maybe we show it, throw it back up again, no matter how many times we see it, we're filled with awe. Uh, as you look at it yourself and what you saw this morning, anything in particular stand out to you? Well, the, the fountaining is uh, particularly noteworthy. Um, as you get into the later stages of the eruption, uh, that will tend to uh, back off a little bit and you'll see more of a gentle bubbling, but those, are, those look like some pretty tall fountains for the, uh, uh, the initial phases of the eruption. Um, it's good to see it contained within the crater. That means that at this point, no motion down the rift zones, which is where we start to get concerned about populated areas. Uh, but it's quite a sight. It's uh, it's always gorgeous. Yeah. And, and I'm just out of curiosity, because of the increased activity recently around Kilauea, were you put on alert as a communications director for HIEMA that you may be on TV at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> I'm always prepared to be on TV <laughs> at 5.30 in the morning. I never look any better than this, so. Yeah, well, that's good to know. No, uh, Adam, real quick, <laughs> one more thing. Any other thoughts of, of uh, safety concerns that we haven't mentioned? Uh, well, our teams will be in touch with uh, the folks at HVO throughout the day, with the folks at the National Park. Um, we'll talk to our colleagues over at the State Department of Health and see what uh, uh, the county uh, feels is necessary to get uh, in the way of air monitoring. Uh, there is a fairly uh, robust network of air monitors already in place on the Big Island. Uh, so we'll be looking at what that data is, and to the extent that there's any need to alert the public, uh, we'll pass that word along. Right. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Adam, thank you for the time. Right. We appreciate it. Yeah. Adam you. Weintraub from Hyema. The pictures have been just spectacular, oh, so we're yeah. going to continue to follow this breaking news throughout the morning. So stay with us here on Sunrise. There you go.